Whenever conjugated molecules, conjugated 1,3-dienes, undergo addition reactions, two types of products can form. We have the 1,2 addition product and the 1,4 addition product. Now, depending on the type of conditions that the reaction is under, that basically determines the type of product that is formed. If we are under low temperature conditions and we do not have uh, enough time, the product that is formed is 1,2 addition product and the reaction is said to be under kinetic control. Now on the other hand, if we have high temperature conditions and an unlimited amount of time, then in such a case the product is the more stable 1,4 addition product and such a condition is known as thermodynamic condition. So the reaction is said to be under thermodynamic control. So now let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to determine the products of the addition of HCl2 to methyl 1,3-butadiene under kinetic control and thermodynamic control. So this is our molecule, this is our 1,3-diene, and these are the two pathways that we want to explore. So the first pathway is low temperature and addition of HCl and very little amount of time. The second is a high temperature condition, addition of HCl, and we are allowed an unlimited amount of time. So let's begin by describing what the intermediate carbocation of this addition reaction will look like. So in both cases, the intermediate resident stabilized carbocation will be exactly the same. So basically, we have the following molecule, our 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene. And we have the addition of our HCl. Now the question is, where exactly will this H end up on? Will it go onto this carbon here or this carbon here? That is, will this pi bond take this H or will this pi bond take the H? So let's break down our reaction into two different potential pathways. We'll call this pathway A, we'll call this pathway B. So basically, let's suppose that this pi bond takes away our H and let's call this A and then let's suppose that this takes away our H and let's call this pathway B. So if we follow pathway A to form our H on the first carbon, the H must go onto this carbon here. So we basically have the following molecule that is formed. And the H goes on to here. Now notice that we have a double bond here and we have an, an empty 2p orbital here, so that means we have a positive charge on this carbon. And notice that because we have conjugation in this molecule, we have the pi bond in close proximity to this positive charge, we're going to have resonance stabilization. So this bond will go here, forming a double bond here, and that means that we're going to have the charge go into this carbon here, the first carbon, which is a primary carbon. So this is a primary carbocation. This is a secondary carbocation. And so the intermediate is uh, somewhere in between these two structures. Now, if instead we follow pathway B, that means the H will end up on this carbon here. So let's draw our molecule like so. We have a double bond here and we have the H that ends up here. Now our positive charge in this case will end up on this tertiary carbon. So we'll have a tertiary carbocation intermediate and this too will have resonant form. So we're going to be able to take this pi bond, it will move here forming the following molecule. So we have a pi bond here, we have the H molecule here, and we have a positive charge on this N carbon. 
So the question that we want to answer now is, which one of these pathways will actually be followed in both of these protonation steps? So in both of these conditions, the first step is the same. It's the protonation of our 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene. The question is, which one of these pro protonation pathways will be followed? Well, if we examine our carbocations, we have a primary and a secondary, and a primary and a tertiary. And because the tertiary is more stable, we see that this will have an intermediate that is lower in energy, and so this is the pathway that is followed, and this pathway A will not be followed. Now. Now let's actually move on to the low temperature and the high temperature conditions. And let's begin with the low temperature conditions. So as mentioned earlier, low temperature means we have kinetic control taking place. And kinetic control means that the 1-2 addition product is the product that is formed. So we have an H or a, a simply a Cl here because the H has been already protonated onto our molecule. We have the Cl here and the Cl can basically either go onto this or it can go onto this. Now, this means we form the 1-2 addition product. This means we form the 1-4 addition product. So because we're dealing with low temperature, that is kinetic control, in this case we form our 1-2 product. So this basically bonds to this. So we basically have this Cl attached here, we have the H attached here, and we have our double bond here. So this is our 1-2 addition product. Now on the other hand, if we look at the thermodynamic, then this will basically follow this pathway here and we form the 1-4 product. So we have our double bond bonded between the second and the third, we have our Cl that is found here and the H that is found here. So this is the 1,4 product and this is the 1,2 product. So let's suppose this is pathway C and this is pathway D. Then here we follow pathway C and here we follow pathway D. So once again, we can see that conjugation creates a special type of chemical reactivity that is, under certain conditions, our 1,3-diene can either form one type of product predominantly or a different type of product. So under low temperature conditions, kinetics takes over and we form the less stable 1,2 product because it has a lower activation energy and because the Cl is found closer to this carbon than to this. But if we are under high temperature conditions and when we have enough time, that means we are under thermodynamic conditions so we do have enough energy for our activation barrier to be passed over and our CL has enough time to make it all the way across to this side of the molecule and we form the more stable 1,4 addition product.